in every generation, there is always a voice that God sends to open the eyes of understanding of every sincere seeker and lover of the truth of the gospel and refute the half-truth and deceptive lies of every religious tradition and practices that masquerade as counterfeit to the truth of the Christian faith. This is the hard truth of the gospel. What is that sin which God in his word said is unforgivable, unpardonable? The sin unto eternal death. There is a sin, all the sins, there are sins that are forgivable, but there are sins that are not forgivable. What is that sin? It is. It has been a long walk in the Word of God, in the book of Matthew, chapter twelve. We read from from verse twenty-eight to thirty-one. Mark chapter three. We saw the walk, the Word of God concerning that sin which is unforgivable. The Lord Jesus said, you blaspheme against me, it shall be forgiven you. You blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven you. Neither in this age, nor in the age to come. And we wanted to know further, what is that sin that is unforgivable? And we went across the scriptures and we discovered that that sin is nothing but the sin of unbelief. In John chapter 16, verse 11, in John chapter 16, verse 9, the Bible said, uh, God, the Holy Spirit will convict you of sin because you do not believe in me. And so from there, we discovered that that sin that he was talking about, that sin he was referring to, is not other sin, but the sin of unbelief. And we now began to examine this sin of unbelief. We went through the scriptures, searching to know how is this sin different from other sins? And scriptures reveal that they are different. And we saw other sins, including the ones that the world called capital offenses. And we saw that these sins are not only that they can be forgiven by, the, by, by God, but the blood of Jesus can cleanse any one of those sins, provided the person has believed. If only the person has believed in that Lord Jesus. We saw in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, a people that were admonished that before they, when they came into the church, some of them were murderers, some of them were adulterers, some of them were all manner of things, but God forgive them. For God forgave them and implanted them and received them in his church. But there is a sin that is unforgivable. And uh, we looked at what is that sin in John 14, verse 17. Because the word, the, because Jesus said in that particular passage, if you sin against the Holy Spirit. So we need to know how we can sin against the Holy Spirit. And we went in search of what are these things that the Holy Spirit, uh, in what way can we sin against the Holy Spirit? And for us to know that, we went to John chapter 14, verse 17, and the Bible said, He is the Spirit of truth. This year, this Holy Spirit that people call, that people mention, churches mention, pastors mention. The Bible said, He is the Holy, the Spirit of truth. John 14, verse 17. John 15, verse 26. Jesus also says, He is the Holy, the Spirit of truth. That very Holy Spirit I'm talking about, you are fond of using the word Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of truth. Also in John 16, verse 13, He was called by the same Jesus, the Spirit of truth. And we went to 1 John chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, verse 6, in search of what is this spirit of truth. And in 1 John chapter 5, in fact, that spirit was called the truth. Hallelujah. In that passage, the spirit of God was addressed as what? The truth. 
And remember, in John 8 verse 32, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You are still saying that word, truth. You will know it, and you, it shall set you free. So we've got to, if the Holy Spirit is truth, then we've got to know the truth. And by knowing the truth, you know the Holy Spirit. And we went to 1 John chapter 4 verse 6. And in that 1 John chapter 4 verse 6, the Bible says, Beware, there is two spirits, the spirit of truth and spirit of error. Spirit of truth and spirit of error. When people say, I, uh, the Lord told me, I was spoken to by the Holy Spirit, you first of all ask yourself, what kind of holy, what kind of spirit? Is it the spirit of error or the spirit of truth? In, in some of our messages, we have been told how to identify the spirit of truth. How to know the truth. Uh, Akash, can you remember the test for knowing the truth? Test of what? Test of authority, test of consistency, and test of what? Test of origin. Three tests. We have a very strong message on how to know the truth. Because if you don't know the truth, your conscience will, you just hear anything you say, the, the Lord told me. The Lord told me, the Lord told me, is what has plunged the world into, into a proliferation of errors in the name of God. The Lord told me. Which God told you? In Galatia 1, 6 and 7, the Lord Jesus, the Spirit of God speaking through Apostle Paul says, If that Spirit tells you any message, anything contrary to the one already stated in the Word of God, which day the Apostle have written, whoever that Spirit is, Apostle Paul said, even if he's an angel of God, even if he's we, the Apostle, if we, after preaching this, we come back. And they have used two strong things that you cannot have a parallel today. They use themselves. They use even angels. Today, people are believing fellow human beings for what they have told them. That is not contain, That is not in accordance with what the apostles preached. They say, whosoever preaches or telleth you anything Contrary to that which we, the apostles, have preached, which we have written for you in the Bible, let him be eternally condemned. And so it is important. So they have laid the truth. If you watch that place, John 16 verse 13, he said, When he, the spirit of truth, shall come, he shall teach you, he shall guide you into all truths. So there was no truth that was left untouched exemplified by the Holy Spirit using the apostles. And so we cannot today, you cannot invent or conjecture or conjure anything, message, practice that is not the word of God, that is not in accordance with that which they told you. Before leaving, assuming Adam had told Eve, when he wanted to leave the house, whosoever comes at Eve, Eve, whosoever comes and tell you, speak it to you, saying anything which the Lord has not told us, let him be eternally condemned. In verse 7, he said, As we said to you before, we said it again. If anybody come, if and tell you anything contrary to this thing I told you that God told me, let him be eternally condemned. Maybe Eve would not have done what she did. Hallelujah. Maybe Eve would have told the serpent, my master, my lord, Adam told me, that whosoever that comments, including him, Adam, and speaketh to him concerning any other thing, 
Contrary to that which God has said, say you should not do it. Put yourself in that shoe. There is a question that you have not yet answered. How is it that God has told the church? The church is another Eve. Christ is another, is the second Adam. Amen. The Bible called your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The second. The Bible calls the church the wife of Jesus. The bride of Jesus. So the second Adam has entered the garden again and has come with his wife. You claim to be his wife. And Jesus has told you whosoever comment after me whether I'm the one whosoever including angels and preach a thing contrary to this thing I have told you let him be condemned I want you to understand the context because today the world's religion Christianity of different versions are built upon what God told me. The Lord told me in a dream, in a vision, in a word of prophecy. If anybody run around here now and say, Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. And he proclaims anything, not that which is in this word of God. Shall we, because he said, Thus saith the Lord. Say, hey, it must be true. Amen? But that is what the world has done. That is where the church has gone. The church has looked upon, upon the, 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 the splendor, the offices of men, the height of men, the position and rank of men, what they are rogated to themselves. And they have spoken. They call it decree. They call it doctrines. They call it anything and you have accepted it and laid aside what your husband told you. If we we'll rise up and tell you on that day, if Adam had told me when, before she left, I would never have listened to that serpent. But because of the mistake in the garden, the second Adam said, don't go anywhere wait for my spirit in the upper room. When he comes, he will guide you into all all what? Did he come? Did he guide the church? Laying examples doctrine by doctrine. Let precept by precept what the church should do. And when he left, even before they left, if you read the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, from verse 28 to 30, Apostle Paul said, We are about to leave the scene. And when we leave the scene, grievous wolves shall come in among you, and they shall pervert the gospel. Of the Lord Jesus. They shall, they shall bring, invent their own doctrines. You see, the Holy Spirit saw what happened in the Garden of Eden and left the church, the wife of the Lord Jesus. A lot, a do, an overdose of lecture, of, of, of uh, admonitions, instructions, knowing that the devil will surely come. In Matthew chapter 13, the Bible records that in the parable of the garden of the gardener, when the garden was planted by the gardener, he left through of us. The Bible said an enemy came and planted inside that garden weeds resembling the weeds. And the master, the servant said, Master, 
you have planted this garden, permit us. We can see weeds in the church. Let us go and weed them out. Say no. Allow both the good seed and the bad seed. Allow both the weeds and the weeds to grow at the time of harvest. The person you are looking at, you don't know whether he is a, a, a good seed or a bad seed. Because you saw him in the church. Because he says in Jesus' name. Because he says praise the Lord. You conclude that because he has a Bible. Because he's quoting it. Because he's full of anointing. Because he's very religious. You, are, you told yourself, this man, what he tells me, I will accept it in place of what your husband has told you. Judge for yourself. When I was a little younger, I looked at the what, what ifs did in the garden. I wondered. But the Bible said the serpent was very subtle. The Bible says of all animals that God created, he was the most subtle. He was not crawling then. And he took advantage of his subtlety and deceived Eve. The church has been, has been deceived. The church has been apostatized. The church has been led into a wilderness of errors. Because they don't know that there are both spirit of truth and spirit of error. Anything they see in the dream, in a vision, the Lord has said, who told you? Bible said there is a, a, there is a way you can judge. Even in that your vision, there, Bible tells us in 1 John 4, 1 to 3, there is a formula the Holy Spirit gave you. He said, if you receive such a vision, challenge that spirit. He says, I, can you confess to me that Jesus is Lord? 1 John, 3, 1 John 4, 1 to 3. Yes, you have said that I should do this, that this and this. Hold on, spirit. I have a question for you. I have been instructed not to accept anything you anything, anything I hear. I have to test to know who is who. Because they are a spirit of truth, they are a spirit of error. Let's see 1 John 4. 1 John 4. Yes. Beloved, believe not every spirit. But try the spirits. Did you see it? Is it there? But the church has been believing everything. Anything, once that woman, once that man is prophesying to you that it shall be well, you believe everything. You don't ask any question. Look at it. The Holy Spirit, even after laying the truth, gave the church a test. When the enemy comes, use this thing against him. I can assure you I will trap him. There is something I have said he cannot use his mouth to confess. Challenge him. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the almighty God? Do you believe that the Lord, your Lord, the, the, the man that died 2,000 years ago, spirit that is talking to me, do you accept that Jesus, that man that died 2,000 years ago, is my, my God, the almighty God. Beside him, there is no other God. Do you believe? Let him talk to you again. You, he will keep quiet. Let him talk to you again. He will not. He will keep quiet. Because this is the word of God. The word of God gave us three tests. Test of consistency. It must be consistent with what the Spirit of God has been teaching in the Word of God. It cannot be a thing, it cannot be different. If you did not see Paul do it, you did not see Peter do it, James did not do it, Philip did not do it, Andrew did not do it, Thomas did not do it, Ron 
Run with your run without looking at me, looking looking back. But the church has been deceived. Just as Eve was deceived, the church has been led astray. They are they were told by the devil, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. In the word of God, we've seen God sending out spirit of error by himself to go and deceive people. Almighty God by himself. First Kings chapter 19. Sending out an spirit, a spirit of error. Go and deceive that man. Go and deceive him. What shall I do to deceive that lady? God asking himself a question. What shall I do to bring the word of my servant Elijah to come to pass in your life? And one spirit came and said, forgive him. Forgive him, God. He, God ignored that spirit. Other spirits came. One spirit among that, among the spirit that came said, I know what you will do. Say, what is it? I will, if you send me, I will go to the mouth of his prophets and I will anoint their tongue. I will anoint their tongue and they shall prophesy a lie to him and he will believe that lie and he will kill him. Just a lie. The devil has told the church it does not matter. The devil says in James 2 verse 19, I also believe. See, don't, don't fool yourself with this thing, I'm a believer, because you go to church. That is what the devil has planted and arranged for you. He has packaged you to just be saying, I am a child of God, I'm a believer. Believer, Bible says even the devil says he also believes, not just believes, but uh, trembles. It is one thing to believe in God. But God is not talking of believing in him. God is talking of believing his word. Believing his word. In the garden of Eden, Adam believed his word. Eve believed his word. Satan came and tested their belief. That Satan that came didn't tell Eve, God does not exist. That Satan did not tell Eve, there is nothing like God, it's not true. No, he's a believer. He told Eve, did God, underline the word God. So he recognized for Eve that he also is a believer, that that man that used to come and have fellowship with you people, that he is God. He gave the impression to Eve that he also, Lucifer, I also believe that he is God. However, did he tell you you should do it this way? He said, yes. It's okay. Now, let me introduce you to another one now. The devil now, he now led Eve into doing something that God did not do. Not believing the word. Just shifted he shifted her away from not believing the word. So it's different to believe in God and to believe the word of God. The devil believes in God. He believes that there is God. He does not believe the word of God. He cannot abide in the word of God. And he wants people he can bring in into his camp. We are believers. Yes. Are you a believer? Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. No problem. You are with us. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Look at that spirit. He's coming to lead you astray. He will tell you one thing that will shift you away from your brethren. You have a brother. The apostle Peter, apostle Paul, they are your brethren. They say, follow us, for we follow Christ. 
The church has been led astray. The church has been led astray. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 4 The Spirit of God gave a warning that in the same way Eve was deceived, the church has been deceived. He said, beware, you are coming to the church. You are a believer. He said, you want to go to the church. Beware. Inside that place you are going, so many people are already there who are already deceived. How are they deceived? By the same way he did it in the garden, he has also done it again. In the garden, he used a serpent. He used a serpent because there were no other human beings around there. So the only thing he used was any of the animals. Today, there are human beings. He cannot use serpent. So don't expect a serpent here. If you see one, you will run. Three of us. Good. It is fellow human beings like you that he will use. He will not just use any kind of person. He will use, the Bible tells you there, the people he will use. Not just ordinary people. Not just a member of the church. No. He said, he has transformed himself into an angel of light. And has equally raised up ministers who parade now as apostles of this gospel. Bishops. General overseers. Powerful men of God. I hear people say that there are now prophets and senior prophets. Maybe there is now prophet one, prophet two, prophet three. It depends on degrees. Things are happening. Ah! Things are happening. This house belongs to somebody. This church belongs to somebody. It does not belong to these people that are doing these things. He said, the church I purchased with my blood. He's boasting of it. It is my property. Upon this rock, I am building it. The gates of hell shall not prevail. You enter that church. You gave yourself a name. You say, Senior Apostle. Shineke Goli Who are the junior ones, please? I did not see a single one in the Bible. Suddenly, after 2,000 years, Christ has come and gone. I'm now seeing senior apostles. I'm now seeing women who are bishops. I'm now seeing women who are pastors. Where are we? In your Bible, what did the Holy Spirit tell you? He said, I do not permit women to preach or to teach, or to support authority. They are to keep quiet in the church. And somebody is so full with anointing, say it does not matter. You, you see, you know, God is a loving God. God is not that. It, it's, let me tell you, Paul must have been a very, you know, this Paul, you know, he was formerly a Pharisee. When God converted him, he didn't actually uh, uh, abstain from all those rigid principles of uh, Phariseeism. <laughs> I tell you, that man told you anything that you receive as a gospel, which is not according to the gospel, the Lord Jesus revealed through me. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Two of us, Galatia 1. Say, so I don't care whatever you call me. I don't care. Open your eyes and see how the world has been misled again. You are complaining of Eve. Eve, Eve, who may reveal what Eve did to mankind. What Adam and Eve did to mankind. If not for Adam and Eve now, I would have been enjoying the guys of it. You are the, the Eve now. You are not even Adam. <laughs> You are the Eve. Christ is the Adam. It was not the first Adam that that the that the serpent deceived. He deceived who? Eve. But unlike the first Adam, the first Adam came back and his wife gave her gave him. He also did what? Eight. This second Adam 
is the almighty God himself in human flesh. You cannot deceive him. Eve was able to deceive Adam in the garden. This one, no way. He told you, I am the truth. I am what? You cannot, there is no lie in me. God is opening your eyes for a purpose. Are you saying that you are going to remain what you are after hearing this gospel? I am sorry for you. Are you saying you will continue to say, I believe in God? All I know is that I believe in God. Have you not seen those that believed in God and how they were deceived? If believed in God, he didn't follow the word of God. He didn't abide in that word. And the serpent deceived her. Today, the church is being deceived not by the serpent now. <laughs> not by snake. Apostles. Powerful men. When they come, they have helicopters. They wear white and white. Bible call them wolves in the in the garment of what sheep inwardly something is inside them they said they they masquerade look at a masquerade and see how see for yourself in a masquerade there are two persons the man inside do you see him do you see him what are the camouflages today the, if i carry word of god now and enter your house and say i want to pray for you Will you not follow? Will you not uh, believe me? I was uh, strolling along the along uh, the road recently in front of my office in Enugu recently, and I just wanted to have a stroll before we start coming back. And something happened. A young man saw me. <laughs> His mouth was oozing with uh, ego, and he told me, God say I should tell you anything. This is a person that is more or less a hooligan. <laughs> He's more a, a, a motorbike out, as rough and unkempt as that. He said, when he was coming, I was apprehensive. I had to hold my phone very tight. <laughs> he has come to snatch my phone. I said, could it be this one has come to attack me or what? He came and said, God say I should tell you that anything you touch this week, anything you want to do this week, God is going to give it to you. Ha. The moment I see him saying this, you know what I did? I just, I, my office was very, I just entered, boarded one uh, keke. You can imagine me doing that. Just to escape. Because if I continue walking, he will continue preaching to me. So I just entered one keke and said, please push me just across. And he pushed me. And <laughs> after a while, I stopped and said, please, <laughs> give me money. I said, just go your way. I don't know how a madman with a, a madman oozing with uh, Igbo is talking to me, telling me, see anything, anything where you like this week, just make you try it. God will God tell me to tell you, yeah, he will do it. That is the new version. Maybe he will talk that and somebody will say you are blessed. You see, but the Bible said those that we say it do it, the people that the devil will use are not people like that. That one is too obvious. Nobody will see the person and believe it. Let's see Second Corinthians eleven verse four. See the kind of thing that has been let loose in the church. From verse 3 to 4, for I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve 
through his subtlety, so your minds will be corrupted from the simplicity that, that, that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preached another Jesus, if the person cometh, because if you he said you will surely the church will be deceived. Why? Because all they need to be deceived is for somebody to say, come and say, I'm coming in Jesus' name. That's all. Another Jesus. They will not say in the name of another Jesus. They are going to come by saying, in Jesus' name. But that Jesus is another Jesus. He said, another Jesus whom you, we have not preached. So there is a Jesus they have preached and there is a Jesus they have not preached. So how do you know the Jesus that is the Almighty God? It is that Jesus whom the apostles have preached. Any other Jesus, not that one they preached. If they preach to you Jesus that is another God or another person from the Almighty God, that is the Jesus. But if they told you that this Jesus they preached unto you, that the Almighty God, whom you regard as God, is the one dwelling inside. Inside what? Beside him? But inside him. Another Jesus, watch, whom we, the apostles, did not preach. If you want to know the difference between the Jesus they preached and the Jesus the world is preaching today. Go through your beliefs and you will see that the one you believe today is said to be another person with the main God still different from him. Hallelujah! Is a lie from the pit of hell. Colossians 2 verse 9 says the fullness of God dwells inside that Jesus. Philippians 2 verse 9 to 11 says, In the name of that Jesus, we are saying, is another person. The total, everything in heaven and on earth must bow in his name. That very Jesus in Revelation 1 verse 8 says, He is the almighty God. But the devil has told the church after the demise and departure of the apostles that the Jesus you have to believe is that Jesus who is a different person from the Almighty God. So, the Almighty God is one person. Jesus is God the Son, one person. There is also God the Holy Spirit, another person. The three of them are three different persons in one God. Is from hell. It's not in your Bible. Be very careful. From Genesis, God kept on lamenting with very high voice through all their through all the prophets. The Lord your God is one. One what? To avoid you saying that uh, yes, is one God, but the Savior is different. In Isaiah 43, 10 to 11, he says. There is no other savior except me, the almighty God. Anyone you see that will come in future, I am he. Beside me, there is no other savior. Another one. Then eventually, Jesus came and called himself a savior. He said he is another person. That your word, Trinity, is not there in the Bible. And if you use your phone to Google when the church started using that word, it will land you in the year 325 AD, 325 years after Jesus has come and gone. That is when the church was lured into accepting that God is not one, but three in one. And everybody is believing it today as their article of faith. Go to CSC, see their article of faith. The first article is we believe. Have you seen the difference between the church, 
they built her. That's why he said that church in the Bible, he says, the gate of hell cannot prevail against it. But in the church in the world today, it has become a den of devils. It has become a habitation of demons. It has become the, the storehouse of all the weapons of the enemies. Yes. Another Jesus. Your Bible told you there is another Jesus. But you have refused to be conscious of it. The devil does not want you to know. You see it there. It says another Jesus. And to help you know it, he said, whom we did not preach unto you. And going down, he says, another gospel, the one we did not preach. Another spirit, the one we did not preach unto you. He said, that is the one the world will accept. A word of prophecy. 2,000 years ago. Fulfilled in your presence. And you are watching. Where do you stand? Is it that Jesus that they preached? That you are believing today? Or is it the Jesus that they say is another Jesus? Which one? Which one are you believing? Child of God. Open your eyes. Shine your eyes. Because the devil is at work. Exactly that thing he did. You are reading the story of how he dealt with Eve. And you are imagining how it happened. Some are imagining what is that fruit at the center of the garden. Stop that your philosophy. Something is about to happen in your own life. That devil is at work in your own heart. Exactly what he did. Look at the people he will use. Uh -huh. Yes. To whom you will have not preached. For if he that come preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might bear well, ye might well bear with him. In verse 14 and 15, look at it in your Bible. It says, And no marvel. And that is where I want to. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Satan has transformed. In the garden, he saw the thing that what we what can be used to achieve a deception? Serpent. Now, if he comes with serpent, everybody will run here. People will stand afar off and be binding the the what? Yes. You will use blood of Jesus and block. In fact, you will build a bridge of blood. Uh -huh now. You join them in the vehicle, they will use blood, they will cover the road, cover the tire, cover the screen, cover the ear, cover everything. That is what, if this Satan comes in here, in that form he used on Eve, all of us will run. We shall, some people will jump through the window. Don't expect, look at the way he's coming. He said, he has now, God has brought us down inside the church. He said, he has now transformed himself into an angel of what? Angel of what? Did you hear him? Uh -huh. Angel of light. And he says, he has raised ministers. And therefore, it is also no great thing if his ministers also be transformed into ministers of righteousness. So, he's not going to use serpents. He's going to use able ministers, powerful ministers, people who can speak and everybody will be on the ground. People who can, with, with signs and wonders. In fact, if you look at it in 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2 from verse 9 it says it's going to be with signs and what wonders people that will be on the pulpit they will do like this you are you are if you used to if uh, women who carry scarf here we are to be here if we used to if we have scarf on our head you are scarf we do what fly off with them in one of my encounter as an as a missionary in Lagos, I went to one. I went to preach. Uh, I think I was told of a particular place in uh, a crusade in Lagos, where somebody went, and uh, the man of God, he would just do like this, receive it in, in Jesus' name, and people scarf. Yeah. People were falling. As you are, you are falling on top of the person behind you, and the one is falling on top of the other person. Seeds are being scattered. That is what he wants. Yes, he said, with lying signs and wonders. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. He said, It's going to come to you. Look at it now. Satan and his ministers. In Acts of the Apostle, chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed, therefore, 28 to 30. Take heed, therefore, unto yourself and to all, to all the flock over the which the Holy Spirit have made you overseer, to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. Did you see it? He purchased this church with his own blood. Human beings say they have taken over. In the in what they are registering as CAC, they are asked, who is the owner of this church? Who do they write? Their names. They are the founder. They founded it at the cross of Calvary. Jesus was crucified the other place. They were equally crucified beside Jesus. And, uh, Jesus died was laid to the tomb they also died went to the tomb came up and today they, they have their they own churches very brilliant men they are very interesting stories yes for i know i know this that after my departure after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you not sparing the flock also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples from them i mean after them therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years i cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears for three years after all this warning i said if eve received this kind of warning as serpent is coming, she will tell serpent to hell with you. What my husband told me is that I should not eat it. Whether it will give me knowledge of good and bad, I don't know. Whether it will make me to be like God, I will not. But you have been told, you have an advantage now over Eve. Why are you behaving the way you are behaving? Jesus said, you do not believe in me because you are not children of God. If you are a child of God, this gospel will convict you. If you are a child of God, hearing my voice, you must accept that there is no other way for your salvation except in believing the Lord Jesus. It's not a religious thing. I was in a meeting yesterday with one with apparently the richest man in any state. And it was, we, we are in, in a place where so many people from my community gathered. <laughs> the man told them, I used to know this barrister for many years. I used to know this man for many years. He is a child, he was telling my community, he's a child of God. The moment he said to them, he's a child of God. There was an opera. <laughs> ha! What, what, what are you telling now? Oh, oh, this one? What? Hey! Now, uh, 
Please, oh God, don't go there. Don't ever go there. This is a strong occultic man. Don't ever. Don't make that mistake. We know this one. If you have another person to point. In fact, the man asked me, leave the place where you are. Come and sit with me here. <laughs> Among everybody. Like that. Uh, different people were there. They talked. When I came, I said, uh -huh. uh, they will not believe. I am a sinner. Saved by what? Grace. The thing was an eye opener. I laughed and laughed even after eating in my head. My, last night ago, I was so busy laughing. What happened yesterday? We are, so, if God were to come now, and some of you will see me in heaven, so, some people will say, Objection, my Lord. Objection, my Lord. No, 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 no. That place is not heaven. There is somebody and see them. Wait a minute. Is that Barista Ubuga? Ah, uh, please. Uh, God, eh? Almighty God. Don't take me to the heaven where Barista Ubuga is because when we were here, we used to know him. Haba, we know him. A strong occultic man. No, that one, no, no, go, no, go here. The man you're accusing is not denying. <laughs> Let me ask you, when you accuse Mary Madeline, did she deny? <laughs> Hallelujah! When you accuse Mary Madeline, I say to you, did Mary tell you, Almighty God, I did not do it? Did she say so? She was humbled. I am a sinner, but I have been saved by grace. <laughs> When you ask Barabbas to leave the prison, what were you doing? He didn't know that sinners like Barabbas will come. Another Barabbas has uh, come. You did not complain in the case of Barabbas. Did you complain? Do you have any objection? Is it in my own you have objection? <laughs> in 1 Timothy 1 verse 15 and 16, Paul, the apostle, said, This is a saying worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came to die for sinners, of whom I am the what? I am the chief of all sinners. And for this reason, God has decided to save me, to use me as an example to those of you who are small sinners. That if God can save a chief of sinners like me, then you should have a hope in Christ. That is the message of salvation. And this, despite all these things, the church is led astray. Thanks for joining us in today's edition of the Hard Truth of the Gospel. It is hoped that you will take advantage of this momentous encounter with the truth of the Gospel to make an informed decision today that we avail you of the saving grace of the truth of the gospel or reject it and face the dire consequence of the rejection of the gospel truth. The choice is yours and the die is cast. Join us next Sunday for another edition of Heart Truth of the Gospel, same time. Until then, remain blessed. This is Voice Power Media, the voice of the rim.